So the plan is fairly simple, really. We're going to modify this wood fire pizza oven. I made this, ooh, I don't know, five years ago. Uh, it's had a fair bit of use, and the heat has not been very kind to the internals of this. It's pretty rusted. Uh, it's not beyond repair. <laughs> it just needs a bit of loving, that's all. The walls are fully insulated with um, rock wool rock wall insulation, which is a good sort of fire resistant stuff. It's as prickly as anything. You've got to handle it with glass. And, um, we can control the um, some of the airflow at the top here in the blue. And we have a little temperature gauge on the front. And I quite often max that out when burning wood in the bottom. Um, this is an app. the mess. The plan is fairly simple really. You're going to cut a hole in the bottom and have the... You know, just bring it up straight through there. Yeah, this is a setup. Rocket stove sitting on a couple of bricks. Um, in thinking about it, I don't think I need to stack any more bricks in around it to protect the wood. I think I'm hoping that it's all just far enough away and it'll be fine. Pizza in the very top. Now, I'm going to run this with that flue. If you can see that. This had a nice wooden handle on it. It's completely rotted off. I'm going to run that with it closed or semi-closed like that. And the idea is we've got the hot air. The idea is the heat will come up, it'll come down, and back out the front. Well, the air's got somewhere to go. That's the main thing. Let's see how it goes. Sorry, I'm getting my head in the shot. It's a good idea to have your wood sort of organised a little bit better than what I've got it. Just your smaller stuff together and medium and large and whatnot. Just in these early stages when it's sort of trying to establish the fire. Done there. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have any potatoes for you? Why would I have potatoes? No, I haven't today. I'll get some good dirt on Monday. Okay. Okay, Erin, what is it? Well, we made our pizza and look what we're doing. What's on it? Um, cheese, avocado and bacon and banana sauce and salad cream. Let's put it in. Yeah. Okay, it's 
been 15 minutes, let's see how it's going. Ooh. Oh my word. It's, a, it's going really good. Alright Aaron, alright. That's a lot better than I thought it would be. Well, is that we done it? Yeah. Well everybody, we done it. How's this? What do we do? That's right. Fruits of our labour. Going for number two. That's probably sacrilegious, but I just did. Okay, so tell me about this, my dear. This is a pizza that I can eat that has uh, no gluten, no grain. In it, it's sweet potato and almonds and egg as the base, pre-cooked for 30 minutes, and then with all the other stuff on top, it would be paleo except for the sour cream. No. <laughs> There's Alana. All right. So this is, this is pizza number two. I'm 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 happy with that. So we're uh, out. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Are we making a scarecrow? Yes, yeah, so they can be scared away from our vegetables. <laughs> Scare them away from our vegetables. Thank you. See, I got a coat for him. See a coat. Do you see the coat? That's a beautiful coat. Except I think that's a pillow slip. Yeah, that's a pillowcase, not a cake. That's okay. Well, do we use this wooden? I'm sure that's a common okay. mistake that a lot of people make is is getting pillow slips mixed up with coats. It happens all the time. Let's go so bring Mummy out. Can you help me kind of conk in my stick rope for his head? Oh, wow. Yeah. Just it's a little bit stuck to the paper, dear. Let's go. Oh well. Behold a paleo pizza. Almost. Well, I've lost count of how many pizzas I've made, but that'll be the last one for the night. Um, yeah, I've used up all the wood. Let me take you off the camera stand and bring you around. Alrighty. So I've pretty much gone through all that wood, and I decided I'd just keep making pizzas until I ran out. Um, it's worked really well. That secondary um, burn or air intake has really saved my butt on a few occasions. The ash was just completely clogging that, that bottom breather hole, and it just kept running, and it, it didn't produce any extra smoke. Um, that's just, it's just kept on chugging away. It did lose a small amount of heat um, when that happened. So I, was, I just sort of scraped, scraped it out and kept going. But it's it's worked really well. It, it obviously was it was never going to be as hot as when this whole bottom thing was just filled with barbecue coals and or firewood or whatnot. Um, but it was a much better heat. Um, so yeah, I'll give you a quick view. What's going on down in there? Um, that. This has worked really well. I haven't had... Um, that's the first time fires actually crept up there you know, that I'm about to say. I didn't get any band back. That was a really thin bit of, pe bit of pine. This thing has run really well. This box is, if you can see my hand, it is hot to touch, but uh, it, it's, not, it's not so hot that it's going to catch fire, so I'm probably going to leave that how it is. But the great thing about this system is I can just pull it out of here and take it down to my shed and I've got a workshop heater, providing that with adequate ventilation. These things do create carbon monoxide and you can't smell it and taste it or whatnot and it's usually too late when you realise that it's, um, it's affecting you. So if you're going to use something like this inside like a workshop, but, uh, for heaven's sake make sure you've got a door open. You have adequate ventilation because people uh, do die from using uh, wood fires in something like this.
in a confined space. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, I will see you later.